Hello world, it is I, the mystic philosopher, and of course you are tuned to the right number. And thanks very much for watching and for listening. It has been a while since I have last uploaded any video <coughs> sorry, or lecture in the series called Redemption from the Curse of the Black Spell. So starting with this critical analysis, response and commentary on the YouTube video titled What Did Jesse Duplantis Say About Black People? I am hereby <coughs> re resuming <coughs> my lectures and therefore will incorporate this video presentation as part of the series of um, or part of the series on redemption from the curse of the black spell. Now around a month ago, a month or so, a couple of weeks or so, um, one of my Facebook friends post a video on my wall and the title as mentioned before was um, what did Jesse Duplantis say about uh, black people and after watching and listening to it I was immediately inspired to write and post the following comments which I'll now uh, read for you. And I quote, From my perspective, this video offers uh, profound evidence that to be called or labeled black, to act, think, and believe you are black, or to answer to the word the title or the profile, black, etc., is not only a curse, but it is also to become intellectually dumbed down. For only one that is truly black could or would cheer to this preacher's insults and baboonery. First, he falsely claimed to be white even before he thinks. But if he had honestly think before he spoke, he would have known and admitted that he is not at all white and that there is absolutely nothing about him that is white. Said, please check your dictionaries for the meanings and definitions of the words white and black. Here is a humankind that is hereby jeering and pointing out the people who he also callously called blacks. Their ignorance and docility for singing Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. While they were being violently persecuted. And he even had the audacity to be preaching, suggesting, and recommending that the descendants of those people today still continue to sing Amazing Grace and worship the God or gods of their ancestors, persecutors, murderers, and slave masters, and to be in complete obedience to the imperialist heirs and successors. When will they ever learn, or can they? I am the mystic philosopher." Unquote. Now, having read my comments, another of my Facebook friends angrily responded and suggested that I, quote, listen to the whole video, or rather, listen to the whole message, unquote. And my reason for saying that uh, the individual angrily responded and suggested that I listen to the whole message is because I am told by other Facebook friends 
that if or when a friend or a person writes or responds to comments on Facebook or on any other uh, social media using all capital letters, it is because he or she is pissed off. It is because he or she is uh, very angry or he or she intend to insult someone. And it is because he or she is yelling at the top of their voice or his or her voice. So, to you, my Facebook friend, I am well pleased to inform you that I did listen to the whole message, or yeah, I did listen to the whole message before I wrote my comments. And not only did I listen to your preachers or your pastors, every word, his every, his every pause or pauses, intonations, and the very jubilant responses cheers and applauds of his very enthusiastic audience or congregation and his very faithful followers. But I also very keenly observed the attempted collaborating still images in the video. And for your information, as it is my practice, custom and philosophy, all of my senses, my latent intelligence, my thinking faculty, along with my natural ability to critically, rationally, and even logically analyze discourses and information were activated and were very carefully employed during the process of listening and watching the video. In fact, I humbly and very gracefully took your notable expressed highly spirited recommendation. Please listen to the whole message. And I listened to all 3.37 minutes of it at, at times in the company of a few other unbiased, open, free thinking, and critically minded individuals for at least six times just to ensure that my perspective is as fair, is as rational and biased and accurate as might be possible. Especially when I must and I have always admitted and I've always reminded myself that I am still learning my ancestors, slave masters and their ears and successors language, yes. I'm talking about the English language, and I'm still learning how to decode it. So I will hereby dissect and critically analyze the greater portion of this, the preacher's message or sermon or video. And by doing so, I will share with you a more timely, uh, detailed, comprehensive observation interpretation, critique, and commentary on it. And I do hope that you and all others will respond to me in kind. Now first, let me give you a little background information. Let me give you some facts and background information on this video to set the stage. And I will start by answering the following relevant questions. Who made it? Or who made the video? Why was it made? Who published it? Who is the preacher or the, the speaker or orator, orator? What is the topic of his sermon or his message? To what audience was it delivered? When was it published? How many recorded viewers had it gotten? so far? Um, what rating has it got? I will try to answer all these questions so that you will see, hear, and understand why I am identifying and exposing it 
as a propagandist sermon, as a propaganda sermon or a propaganda video. A propaganda video that is designed to further denigrate my ancestors' memory and to insult, designed to insult and demean my people today. One, question one. Who made this video? Or who made the video? What Jesse Duplantis titled, what Jesse Duplantis has to say about uh, black people. Well, from the information I gather, from the description page, it was made by a YouTube subscriber by the name of LP Like Paul, or the username LP Like Paul. Um, question number two Why was it made? Well, according to LP Like Paul, after hearing Jesse Duplantis speak, at the International Faith Convention, or rather conference, he had to make the video and upload it to YouTube as soon as possible, ASAP, and prayed that people enjoyed it. Well, by now, and especially by the end of my critique and analysis, he, LP like Paul, will realize, or will have realized, that his prayers certainly did not answer, at least in my case, for I certainly, and there are others like myself who do not like it, I found it very repulsive. Question number three, who published it? Again, it was published by the creator, LP, like Paul. Four, who is the speaker or the orator? The speaker is the preacher, Jesse Duplantis. Five, what is the topic of his message or sermon? Well, according to LP, like Paul, the topic of the preacher's, um, the preacher Jesse Duplantis sermon or his message was, and I quote, why, black, why blacks in America hate each other? Six, to what audience was, he, was it delivered? Again, according to LP, like Paul, the, the, the people or the audience or the congregation to whom the message was delivered was the International Faith Conference. And with, with I have no knowledge, I quickly do a, 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 a Google search and I learned that the International Faith Conference is an annual six-day conference or an annual six-day event that is packed with, and I quote, packed with exciting revelation rich messages from the most anointed Bible teachers in the world. Unquote. It is a conference where the faithful cons converts and followers um, uh, congregate in order to hear faith-filled messages that are designed to build them up in the word of their God and as a result cause their faith to soar even more. Number seven, question seven, when was it published? According to the record, the video was published on September 27, 2012. Question eight, how many recorded viewers has it gotten so far? Well, to date, or at the time of preparing this commentary, it, was, uh, it has received close to 300,000 hits. In other words, in, to be precise, at the time, it, it was, to date, it is 292,644 viewers, just to be precise. And it's keep going up every time I look. Um, and question number nine, what rating has it got? Well, it has gotten 3,749. 3,749 people, our viewers, gives, uh, give it, um, or rather gave it thumbs up or favorable. And 142, including myself, gave it thumbs down, unfavorable. <laughs> now, from my perspective, this 3.37 minutes video consisting of 
around 30 still pictures or still images. Some of them are repeated, of course. Accompanied by the preacher Jesse Duplantis' so-called message or sermon is a bigoted, religiously racist, deceptively called white supremacist propaganda video that is orchestrated, published, and promoted by one of his ardent convert, a follower, a collaborator, and a YouTube subscriber that goes by the name LP Like Paul. It is an attempt at making a group of Caucasian people, if not all Caucasian people, look superior and feel superior to my ancestors and my people and people like myself today that are hereby denigratingly labeled, named, and called the black people. This video is a deliberately assault and an insult to my ancestors and their most honorable memory. It is a deliberate and intentional insult and assault on their natural humility, their natural intelligence, character, dignity, integrity, and above all things, their innocence as the one natural native earthly human. From my perspective, the insulting and demeaning messages in both the still images and speech or sermon, if you will, are not an oversight by either the preacher or his convert, follower, video maker and publisher. But it is a deliberate and intentional insult and assault on my ancestors and us, their, rem their remnants and descendants that the preacher knowingly and intentionally called the black people and who his convert follower collaborator and video maker namely lp like paul so believingly confidently and faithfully presents as a black people or as the black or as a people that is truly black so it is in the defense of my ancestors and their honor that I, the mystic philosopher, is doing this video as a response, and as the saying, saying goes, to set the record straight. So I'll begin my critique, analysis, interpretation, decoding, and my commentary on the entire video with a careful step-by-step -step examination of the preacher's uh, Jesse Duplantis sermon or message and in doing so I shall prove to you the following truths one truth number one that this preacher is first a liar a con and a convert that according to his own Adamic race history and holy book commonly known as the Christian Holy Bible or the Hebrew scriptures he is of his father, Satan, the devil. Two, I will prove to you that he is truly preaching a gospel. A gospel that belongs to him and to his people alone and definitely, definitely not a gospel that belongs to me or my people. I will prove to you that he is preaching a God spell. His God's spell. Now, for your information, the word God, gospel, G-O-S-P-E-L, means and is defined as God spell. Or more correctly, it is a spell from God or a spell from a God, gospel. And for your information, a spell can be good or a spell can be bad. In other words, a spell can be a blessing or a spell can be a curse. And thus, the gospel 
can mean good news for one people and very bad news for another. Gospel can mean good tidings and great joy to one people and miseries and pain to another people. Gospel can mean victory for one people and defeat for the other, etc. So yes, of a truth, he is preaching a gospel. His God spell. A good news from his God to him and his people. But one that is to the detriment of my ancestors and my people today. And all of my people that think or believe that his gospel or his God spell is for them are truly being deceived. In other words, I shall prove to you that he is not preaching good news to my people or good news for my people, nor is he preaching any good news about my ancestors or any good news about my people, the people today that he denigratingly called the black people. And three, I shall endeavor to prove to you that this video comprising of his audio message or sermon and the supported still images of his convert or the supported still images that are contributed by his convert and collaborator is a propaganda video that is designed to belittle my people or my race, if you will. Yeah. Sure. And I, and as I may have mentioned before, not only will I dissect and critically analyze the greater portion of this the preacher's message or sermon or video and share with you a more timely and detailed comprehensive observation, interpretation, critique and commentary. But I will also be doing a critical analysis of most, if not all, of the accompanying still images in separate videos. So please stay tuned. Each video I will analyze them individually and post them right here on this channel. So stay tuned. So let me begin and quote by quoting the preacher. Let me bring in my analysis by quoting the preacher from his video. And I quote, on some of the questions that we ask about the black race, can I just add my two cents? Unquote. Now at this point, at this point, I humbly ask you all my viewers, if you haven't seen the video, I recommend that you do. Observe it. It's not a long video, it's 3.37 minutes video. And at this point, I ask that you listen to it. If you can take time out and listen to the video. And there you may notice with heightened interest as his seemingly predominantly black audience or black congregation at the International Faith um, Conference gave him their seal of approval, which is evident by their very loud and thunderous applause, their very loud and thunderous cheers and laughter. To say anything he received their approval to say anything or anything he may wish to or may want to say to them. He has their approval. Secondly, when you listen to the video, you'll notice that. Secondly, though it may seem insignificant to some of you, but I ask that you pay very close attention and take note of the monetary value that he placed on the people he called the black people. Mm -hmm. And right there, from the start, you will see that they are of very little value or of no value or no worth to him. Right here from the start, you will notice that when you listen to the video. In fact, to him, the people he called the black people only were two cents. That's what he would add to, the, to, to it. Two cents. He continued, and I quote, 
I know something about the black people because I was raised around black people. Unquote. Now I find this statement by the preacher both interesting, insulting, and at the same time very contemptuous and presumptuous. Now how is it interesting, you may ask? It is interesting because the preacher, as slick and sly as I think he is, in all honesty, he did not say that he knows the people that he knowingly and deliberately called the black people. In other words, he did not say, I know the black people. Or, I know black people. Or, I know the people called the black people. So to his credit, he did not say that he knows who the people that he called the black people really are. But the preacher in his own words said, and again I quote, I know something about the black people. People, unquote. Now, except for maybe his converts and followers, most reasonable and open-minded people <laughs> will admit that to know something about a subject is not the same as knowing the subject. And by the same token, to know something about a people is not the same as knowing the people. So why did I say that the preacher knowingly and deliberately called these people that he admittedly only knows something about the black people? Well, it is because I think he is he has prejudged them. And thus, he is prejudiced. He has prejudged them because he grew up hearing his parents, all his friends, his close associates, his society, and others calling them black. And he now believes that he has the right to continue doing the same. It is because I think he thinks of himself and his race his people as being superior to the people who he called the black people. So, here we can see that the preacher is speaking in his own mother tongue and ancestral language and functioning from a paradigm of prejudice and gross ignorance of the people, of my people, that he so arrogantly called the black people. Because if he had known them, or if he had known or taken the time to know us, then he would not have, then he would have known that we are not black people. He would have known that we are not the black people. That we are not the black race of people. If he had known my people, then he would have known that even though some of us in ignorance do answer to the name, the labeled, profiled, and the curse word black, do think they are black. Some of our people do think that they are black, do believe that they are black, and that they do act, some do act, and sometimes do some, some of my people do some very black things. But the facts and his own uh, ancestral records have shown and have proven and no doubt will continue to show and prove that my people, we are not the black race. Mm -hmm. We are not the black race of people that has in the past and that is currently raging havoc and destruction on the planet Earth and all of her natural inhabitants. And with that knowledge or knowing, or if he had the, uh, that knowledge or that knowing, and if he had an ounce of honesty and, or integrity in him, then he would not have called, referred, 
or labeled an entire group of people. We, the natural native earthly humans, the black people. And that I find not only to be a lie and insulting, but also dehumanizing and demoralizing to say the least for now. And what is contemptuous or presumptuous about him saying that he knows something about the black people? The first thing that I find very contemptuous is the condescending change in his voice and the condescending sound of his voice when he said, I know something about the black people because I was raised around black people. Secondly, I think he is very presumptuous in claiming to know something about the people, my people, who from my perspective he knowingly and deliberately, if not outright, contemptuously called the black people. Because in his own words, he was raised around them. And because he was raised around them, he, he now thinks he, he, he is qualified and is at liberty to speak with authority about them. And that is very presumptuous to I, the mystic philosopher. And as I have already shown, that to know something about a people does not mean that you know the people. And history has shown that a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Yeah. Now please note, he did not say that he was raised with or even that he was raised among black people or that he grew up with or that he grew up among black people. Or to be precise, he did not say that he was raised with or among the people that he called black, the black people or that he grew up with the people he called black people, but that he was raised around them. Please listen again for yourself to the message and affirm that those are the preacher's own words and that they are not mine. You see, from my perspective here, he is consciously or unconsciously, knowingly or unknowingly, just can't get away from it, saying to the people that he called or that he is calling the black people that I am not one of you and you are not one of us or one of me. I am not, I was not raised with or among you and you were not raised with or among us or among me and my people. In other words, we do not belong to the same class, we do not belong to the same um, social uh, our economic status, we do not belong to the same race, culture, or creed, etc. I am your direct opposite. That is what he's saying. He continued, and I quote, I am a white guy, I think. <laughs> Unquote. Now please note, and as I have mentioned earlier and in my Facebook comments, he says that he is a white guy even before he thinks whether or not he is in any way white. Now, common sense would suggest that we think before we speak, especially when we are delivering our own message or sermon, especially a message or sermon of such sensitive nature or such a sensitive subject. But even though he has doubts, whether he, which he also expressed, he knew that his audience, or his congregation, saw and think of him as white. They saw and think of him as a white man. And those that he called black see themselves, or see and think of themselves as being the black ones. Consequently, he could freely and without any form of reservation or opposition, asserted himself as being white, a white guy, and easily got away with it. And according to his ancestors, the European um, conquerors, slave masters, and colonial co co colonizers, and their ears and successors' language, 
and in this particular case, the English language, white is not only the opposite of black, but white is superior to black. So if you think or believe that he is white, then consciously or unconsciously, or if you prefer knowingly or unknowingly, he is speaking to his inferior, the black people. And as educated, learned, sophisticated, skewed, warped, religious or holy, the thinking of his audience or congregation may be, as long as they think, believe or see themselves as black, they can never be his equal. For opposites cannot be equal. Not in heaven or on earth. However, I must and without apology inform the preacher, his congregation or his audience and all others like himself that he is not white. In fact, and to put it bluntly, with the exception of maybe his teeth, his hair, the scalar of his eyes, his clothes, from my perspective, there is nothing about him that is white. And if I am to continue trusting my own mother nature's um, given gift of physical sense, of the gift of physical sense of sight, then I must affirm that his skin complexion is not at all white. In fact, not even that which is called his white blood cells is in any way white. And I am sure that even some of you that believe or think you are black may agree with me on that facts or on those facts. From my perspective, his skin complexion may be best described as pale, pinkish pale, reddish pink, or from a possible um, scientific or biological explanation, it is melanin or carbon deficient. And according to his ancestors' holy book called the Holy Bible, his heart or his mind is not white either. Remember, the word white also means and is defined in his own dictionary as pure, as being without blemish, as sinless to the preacher. So anybody tell preaching to you and calling themselves white, you know what they're, they're doing. It, the word white means sinless, unblemished, pure, etc. Check it for yourself. That's their language, not mine. And according to his holy book, if he claims that he has no sin, meaning he's white, then not only is he self-delusional and deceiving others and himself, but the truth is not in him. His Bible said it. John 1 verse 8. Read it for yourself. In other words, if he claims that he is white, then he is a liar. So the question that I would like to ask here is this. By whose or by what authority is he claiming to be white? Well, again, he's, I don't have to answer from my own inspiration. But according to his own holy book, his and his ancestors' own holy book, the Holy Bible, that he preached to the people from, the answer may be found in the same book, John 8 and verse 44. And I quote it for those of you who don't have access to, it, to that book. It said from his book, and I quote, John 8, 44, You belong to your father, the devil. You want to carry out your father's <laughs> desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth. For there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. For he is a liar and the father of lies. Unquote. So anyone coming into you telling that they are white preachers and they are white, meaning they're pure, they're sinless, they're blemished. If, even if you're blind, <laughs> let me tell you who can see that they are liars lying to you. He continued by saying, and I quote, My family, you never really know. They just show up at the hospital and take whatever color comes. Unquote. Whoa. Here he goes with another lie again. 
Well, I personally think that such action by anyone or any family is very reckless and irresponsible or just plain stupid, anyhow you look at it. Unless he is openly admitting to the world and to the public, to his audience and congregation, that his family is a very prom um, promiscuous and mixed up family, a mixed breed family, or it is the real and practical rainbow correlation family. For history and common sense have shown and proven that if or when you mix two different things, two different animals, two different race, two different species, two different colors, if, if or when you mix them together, etc., that the resultant is neither of the original things, neither of the original species or race, but is something new. I don't want to imagine, and I simply can't even imagine my partner being pregnant, and after giving birth, I discover that the baby is a Caucasian, <laughs> an Indian, a Chinese, or a red, green, pink, blue child. That child would not be coming home to my house. I am not, maybe like his ancestor Noah. In this I, am, I am not a 20, um, 21st century Noah, not at all. He continued, and I quote, why is there such, such animosity among the black people, for black people? Unquote. Well, my humble comment and response as a metaphysician and as the mystic philosopher to this preacher's question and to whomever else it may concern is basically divided into three parts or three answers. Part one or answer one. The English word black and the very destructive energy and mystical vibrational forces that are induced and enveloped in it, in the word black, is both literally and spiritually a bad word. It is a bad vibrational word. It is a curse word. It is an adjective that describes and represents evil and especially as it relates to listing, uh, naming, labeling, profiling, describing, etc. a natural native earthly human. It means the complete opposite of good and all that which is good. In fact, here is a direct quote from an English dictionary, namely the Winston Canadian Dictionary for Schools. Black, meaning dismal. Black, meaning threatening. Black, meaning sullen. Black, meaning without moral goodness. Black, meaning evil. Black, meaning indicate, in, indicating Disgrace or indicative of disgrace, indicating disgrace to be exact. And the listing goes on and on. And I challenge all of you who may be watching this, just Google the word black and its meaning. And after you're reading that, see if you would, you would really want to call yourself black, or if you are black. And if you really think so, then you're really black. From my perspective, only illiterate people mindless people, idiots, fools, meaning people of very little sense or intelligence, or people that are really and truly black, would after referencing the English dictionaries for the meanings and the definitions of the word black, will or would continue to think, believe, proclaim, and try to prove otherwise. And as long as a people or anyone knowingly or unknowingly continue to allow themselves to be called, named, list, labeled, profiled, etc., as black, as being the black people, then their miseries will only increase exponentially. The preacher and his ancestors 
own holy book called the Christian Holy Bible states, and I quote, a good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Yeah. Proverbs 22, 1. This is the, their book, the New International Version. Check it for yourself. Just Google it. And it continues, a good name is better than precious ointment. Or a good name is better than precious perfume. Ecclesiastes 7 and 1. And this, I am told by, you know, that it is the, 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 at least the wisest man of his time or the wisest man from his race um, <laughs> said that a good name is better than all of these things. Silver or gold, expensive perfume. So, now you know why this preacher says that he is white. Or at the very least, why he thinks that he is white and not that he is black. He did not even grow up with black people. He grew up around them. Like darkness around light, which is white. He thinks he is white, which is the opposite of black and white, which means all that is good, pure, and superior, etc. 